Hi guys, Maris Memes here. I just wanted to talk about and gripe about problems I have with the entirety of the whole Zelda franchise right now. Now mind you, I'm a huge Zelda fan. I've played every Zelda game up to this point. For the very first time yesterday, I tried Breath of the Wild. It was the only Zelda game I did not want to play. Because in my mind, it was basically just Zelda with Skyrim. It wasn't fun. It didn't look impressive. Graphically, it was lacking a lot. For a big open world game like Skyrim that came out in 2010 compared to Breath of the Wild, which came out at a much later date and had much more time to design and graphically update and get 4K almost and get Twilight Princess level of graphic quality in the overworld, it just didn't, it didn't happen. That kind of connection with that kind of art style does not work in an open scenery. It's too cartoonish and too kid-friendly. Maybe that's the audience that they're going for, but that's not the audience in the game that I want to play. Now, mind you, like I said, I played Breath of the Wild for the first time ever yesterday. I sat down, I played the game to completion for one hour. Beat the game in less than an hour. I gotta tell you, it was the worst... I've played many games, and I'm not, I'm not saying the game is shit. I'm not saying the, the game sucked. I'm not giving it any, any bad mouthing whatsoever. It just doesn't feel... Alive. This, you know, Breath of the Wild felt empty. It felt empty. It's this big open thing. Oh, and in the the trailers for this game when it originally launched, I remember uh, Miyamoto going, "Oh, you you see that uh, mountain in the distance? You can visit that." And it's like, wow. But from a distance, it just looked pastel as fuck. It doesn't look entertaining to the eye. It's not great that you have to go there. There's no objective to go there. In fact, right at the start of the game, right out of the gate, you can go right to the end game boss and finish the game in less than an hour. Less than 10 minutes, 30 minutes almost for speedrunners. It just felt to me horrendously bad. Now, mind you, every Zelda game has been about the lore and the story. Oh, you know, the very first Zelda game. Oh, go collect the Triforce. You gotta go, got, you know, you gotta kill Ganon. You gotta go stop and save Hyrule, basically. Gotta go to every individual level, get the pieces of the Triforce, and go kick his ass, and get his Triforce, and save the world. Um, Zelda 2 was all about waking Zelda up, because he was put, she was put into a sleeping spell. Um, every other game that came after that, it had some kind of story and an objective for the player to do. It made speedrunning those games a challenge and fun. Whereas, right out of the gate, you can just go to the end of the game in a modern Zelda game today? Like, I want to support... Nintendo, I do. It's just these games, as of late, don't feel fun. They don't feel like there's any challenge. They don't feel replayable. Yes, I could go glitch across the map at high speeds and go map clipping and freaking out and, you know, claiming I'm a badass in fucking Breath of the Wild. I've already done that. Do I feel entertained by doing that in less than a couple hours of gameplay at most? No, not really. I don't, I didn't have any fun playing this game. I, I, it, 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 above all sin... It lacks the creativity of replayability. And that's the biggest problem that's going on right now. Now, the title of this video is me talking about Tears of the Kingdom. I was expecting a bit better graphics, more fun version of Breath of the Wild 2, basically, because that's the version of it. Um, I mean, like I said, better graphics, better playability go back to the modern Zelda style, you know, the, 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 you know, the formula, you know, start with three hearts, you know, build up the lore, make the character go get this in order to actually go to the end game boss. And now people literally out of the gates, not only is it worse than Breath of the Wild, people are building fucking plank from Ed and Eddie with a flaming dildo attached to the crotch and running in the villages and shit. They're building airships. They're infinite gliding from the start of the game, right out of the boot, right to Hyrule Castle. And my first initial thought is that they just, this is now just Fortnite. This is now just Fortnite. In game design, 101, I don't care if I get any flack for shitting on uh, Tears of the Fallen King, because I'm not going to play the game. I'm not going to buy the game. I'm not going to support it. Even if the next Zelda game comes out, I'm not going to play it. It is imperative that when you start a series that you continue the same formula, and if you're going to change it up slightly, still continue that modernized formula. 
I feel like Tears of the Fallen Kingdom and Breath of the Wild sexualized Link a little bit. I don't know why. Like, every other game, I've seen him with less and less of a shirt as he's gone on. It, it f doesn't really feel right. It feels like it's trying to appeal to women. And I feel like that's another thing I wanted to talk about. A lot of these video games that are coming out, they're trying to work with Unreal Engine and, you know, women in general, you know, and women in gaming groups. And it's just like, if your view of art, mind you, a video game, when you're making a video game, if it's going to be construed for another group of people, that is not going to be the same thing that you're going to be creating. It's going to be the thing that they want you to create. That's not a game that you made. That's a game somebody else made. That's what that is. I wanted to add real quick before going on the next topic. I tried to find a source that made Link out to be officially gay at some point since 1986. And I ended up finding an, a cringy article by the staff writer of Destructoid from 2018. From a female that was trying to make Ocarina of Time Link homosexual. So I guess it doesn't just stop at male game devs. I guess it, it continues on into female fangirls. Uh... I, I guess somehow it's, you know, it's fact in a woman's mind that, you know, women can't sexualize men in any way, right? Look, I got nothing against women, but when the women start complaining to male game devs, oh, you're sexualizing the titties on the character. Listen, listen, sweetheart. That's just the game developer's mind. You you can't have it both ways. I, I, I'm tired of fucking video game scenes getting all touchy like, oh, we're we're going to make these games specifically for the women. And then they go on to sexualize the dudes next. Because they don't have another audience to sexualize at this point. Where you're going to cut off every gender at this point. You might as well just not even try. That's what goes on in a game developer's mind or a creator's mind. They got to put something sexual to get you to, the eye candy at somehow at some level for you to buy the game. If it's not women, it's men. If it's not men, it's women. So what's, just pick your poison realistically. Be a real game developer. Pick the one you want to pick. Don't let people pick it for you. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, we already seen games like Fortnite. Not a lot of people like them. I don't like it. I don't like Fortnite. I, I think Fortnite is a terrible game. I feel like anybody who plays it creatively and, and thinks that, you know, if you build a quick little uh, building, they sit up there and gun you from it. I don't feel entertained by that kind of game at all. It's basically Minecraft with guns. It's not entertaining. I could not care less about it. That's somebody else's play style. I mean, it's basically real-time rust. I mean, if I'm being real here, it's not fun. I don't play that kind of game. I feel like that kind of game is not competitive in the very least because of all the flaws, bugs, problems, and so forth. And it's just adding skins. Its main objective is to play on the younger audience that plays Overwatch, basically. Now, mind you, I think Overwatch is a terrible game in itself as well because it uses that same bland, generic art style. Mind you, we had games like Twilight Princess, which graphically looked fucking amazing. There, There is no game on this earth since Twilight Princess, other than Skyrim, to come close to graphically meeting that bar. None of them, none of, uh, most of them have tried. Most of these Splinter Cell Edge games get the shading right. They get the shadow and the lightings right. They, they get the character shading, the, the textures. They get it all right. Some of them do. And it's only the stealth games that do it. Only the stealth games. I've only, I've noticed that. It's only the stealth games that get it right. Breath of the Wild, I remember it had a sequence where there was a stealth section in one of the later trial levels or something like that. And I looked it up online. And it just lacked the stealth aspect altogether because most of the time you're doing the, the reed whistle glitch and just sprinting away and ignoring the stealth system. That's not... Th the point of a stealth system, if you're going to implement it in a game, is to use it and have some use for it. Maybe critical damage. Maybe be able to uh, increase your sneak level like you do in Skyrim, like an RPG almost. I'm not saying that that's the route that Zelda should go, but... It's something to play on if you're going to graphically fuck the game from something else. Now, mind you, I'm sorry, when Wind Waker came out, Wind Waker was an okay game that used that art style. It was a different art style. It was new. We had just come off Twilight Princess. It was a great game. So it's like, oh, let's let's go down one peg. Let's make, let's like make Link cute. Why not? That game did well. It was a different game, different story, and everyone liked it. It played off of the art style of the lore of the past, which is what, you know, it, it looked at this um, 
weird kind of artifact like graphic style if that makes any sense like, like hieroglyphic style almost that's what they made the characters based off of this pastel uh hieroglyphic like character almost and when you sit there and you look at them they, they look great they're cutesy they're modern that's fine but then to continue that art style it feels like ever since wind waker link lost his identity slowly over time over the last several years he's just gone more to more to more to more and more shit i feel like the worst one was when i played skyward sword i, I feel like that was the turning point for me to actually just despise playing any zelda game when i turned the game on link didn't start with three hearts he started at six and i sat there and i was like why why, why is he starting with six what am i on baby mode what the fuck? Like, you, you don't want to give me three hearts? Like, it's a normal game? No, maybe they were changing the formula. That's one thing. But then, again, it's plagued with more bugs than a goddamn hooker. I, I mean, honestly, it's it's bad. Like, for example, the reverse save glitch where you can go back in time by fucking with the save files and saving it on the main menu and doing some weird shenanigans and glitching out. That's one thing, I guess, but... That's, again, another bug that should have been looked at, patched, on release, and even before release, tested, and to make sure that, again, you couldn't do shit like that. You couldn't write arbitrary code, you know, because the same thing happened in Twilight Princess, so you would have thought that, oh, okay, this game is on the Nintendo Wii, we had a bug problem in Twilight Princess that had the same problem where people were jumping in the quicksand and the sand level... Right where Link's hand sticks up when he's about to die, right when it's at the wrist part, people would pause, save, reset, and they'd end up on Elden Bridge. They would do the Elden Bridge glitch, which was the same thing. It's writing arbitrary code on reset on saving the game. Now, it might not be arbitrary code that makes that happen. I'm not sure the exact specifics, but Link does spawn in somewhat of a glitched world in a glitched state where his save could be um, basically a glitched character by name. It doesn't actually save the correct setting it can overwrite your save files i think um it could damage save data i wouldn't mess with it maybe it does maybe it doesn't it's been years since i played twilight princess again but i mean graphically just look at all the images that you've seen up on screen so far i mean look at this one look at that that looks like the perfect hyrule field that i've never seen in all these games all these games have this big open pastel it looks like piss i want you to ask yourselves how did we within 11 years go from accepting this to this. It, it, it just baffles me. I mean, look at all these great screenshots from 2006. You got Ganon with the sword through his chest and the dark cloud in the background and all the detail. The village, full on in detail. Every single tile in the building. The Gorons, their freaking design and texture of the skin on their body. The freaking waterfalls, the, the everything. The lake, the people, the trees, even the statues of the Triforce itself. It looks beyond beautiful. And this was 2006. How? How did we as a society fuck up and just accept that? I mean, I'm going on 31 here and these games are shit. These games are shit. The fact that people on Twitter right now, after, you know, less than a week after release, you guys are online, you're praising uh, Miyamoto, Miyamoto is praising himself, oh, this is a great game, the Zelda, mo uh, the Mario movie was a success, and now Zelda's doing great. Meanwhile, people are on Twitter posting fucking, basically, dick penis creations without any restrictions, and just making fun of the game for being Fortnite. I mean, when I saw the thing with Plank, with a flamethrower wiener, I was just like, you know what, I'm not buying the game, I'm done. This isn't the Zelda lore I, I grew up with. This wasn't the series Zelda, you know, the series Link, series Ganon, the whole take over the fucking world thing. Um, the dark world's gonna take over, people are gonna die, the land is gonna go to shit. This isn't the original dark world uh, Link to the Past. Um, which, again, that game, Link to the Past, would do well in that art style. Now, mind you, the one Zelda game I like, Link's Awakening. I liked it. I thought the art style, the cartoony art style, worked because it worked in that game now certain games in certain aspects that wouldn't work that style wouldn't work if you did zelda 2 in that art style no one would like it if you did zelda 1 in that art style no one would like it if you did link to the past in link's awakenings art style in the remake it would actually do well because it came around that same time that 
the 8-bit and 16-bit wars, kiddos, was going on and ending. Most games didn't have that much graphics going on. When Link to the Past was out, it didn't really have much detail going for it. So if you just took Link's Awakening, if you look at the Turtle Rock level, you look at the detail of the inside of the dungeons from an overhead perspective, if you were to take that graphical level of design and implement it into a remake of Link to the Past, that game would excel. Beyond a doubt. That would be how I would remake a Link to the Past remake. I apologize, I'm droning off to other games and talking about their art styles and how some of them work and some of them do not work. Let me go over one more thing. Environments in video games. Environments. The whole concept and the main trailer to Tears of a Kingdom was Link falling down from a sky island, you know, just free falling. And that's kind of cool. But, um, counterpoint, that was done in Skyward Sword. That was already done. Why are we seeing this again? Yeah, it, it, it's just a gripe that I'm having. We're repeating the same thing, and it's from the same game engine, just about. Same art style, and our game hasn't changed since Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword was basically, and mind you, Breath of the Wild and Tears of a Kingdom are basically Skyward Sword at its core. That's all that game is. That's all the two games are. It is literally just Skyward Sword expanded on. Nothing different, nothing changed. They took the original game engine that they had. They took the assets that they had. They didn't build off of those assets. The only thing they did was add more maps, add more detail to maps, make the maps larger, change the geography, and basically pull in Elder Scrolls. Oblivion. Not a Skyrim, an Oblivion. Now, if you don't know what I mean by Oblivion, if you go look up Oblivion Elder Scrolls, go look up who did every dungeon in Elder Scrolls Oblivion. One single guy designed all of those dungeons with a kit. Like a madman. I gotta praise that guy. I don't know what his name is off the top of my head, but I know for a fact only one person designed all the dungeons in Oblivion. All the cave systems in Oblivion, just about. All of them were designed by a single man. Just one person. That's a lot of cave systems in that game. I would count and probably guess that there's close to uh, between, I would say... 60 to maybe a couple hundred. It's not easy to do that with a, a map editor kit and to make all those dungeons, make sure they're graphically stable, uh, make sure you can't clip out of the map, you know, cheat and do all the kinds of weird shit. And this guy made sure to test every single one of those to every extreme that where you couldn't clip out of the map so easily. And again, there are people that are obviously easily glitching in the Zelda game. Don't know how. So there's aspects where you expand upon the map. Now, let me go back to um, Bethesda, you know, the creators of Oblivion. When they do the maps in Oblivion, if you go out of bounds and break the boundary and run out, a lot of the maps just keep going and there's geography that is at very low, low res quality that shows where the maps would have been, the terrain would have been shaped. And most of it goes out of bounds into the areas of the other game worlds that don't exist. Like, for example, um, pre-renders of Skyrim exist in Oblivion. They're not finished. They're in low res. You could somewhat visit them by breaking out of bounds and looking around. But they're in low res textures. The same thing pretty much applies to Breath of the Wild. The further out you go out of bounds, everything is low res texture, flat and normal. And it's just grained out. You're not supposed to visit it, but it's still in low res. You can still go there, just like in Oblivion. You could still go there. Again, let me let me say that again. You could still go there, but graphically it's going to be shit. Now, what year did Oblivion come out? Compared to how many years later for Breath of the Wild? With add-ons? Which Oblivion, I'm pretty sure, had add-ons and mods? I'd say pretty long time. I, th I think Oblivion came out when I was in high school, and that was like 2010. So, I mean... I, that was around since then, and we're in 2023? Uh, Breath of the Wild came out, what, not that long ago? 2020? I'm just going to guess off the top of my head here, I don't know the years. But does it really... Do Are we really at that point where games have gone that low in quality that we're copying texture ideas and low-res uh, geometry and shit from almost a decade ago? Is that a good thing, Nintendo? Or we're copying that to drone out 
a game engine that should have been replaced, I don't know, um, now? Now that you've made box office money from the Mario movie? Um, I would hope that the next Zelda game does not use this art style. If you're going to do a 3D open world, it does not use this art style. Number one, another thing I want to specify about the Zelda games. I did not like the Ocarina of Time 3D remake. I did not like the Majora's Mask remake. I hated both of them. Ocarina of Time was okay. It was somewhat okay. I didn't like it. Graphically, it, it, they tried to make it pastel again. I don't know why they didn't try to go for a Twilight Princess approach because that game was much darker than it originally was intended. A lot of people out there that play both those games don't actually know that both of them were originally one game. They were two games split in half. Look up Zelda Euro. A lot of people, a lot of these kids that play these games are probably going to be like trying to defend them. You don't even know that that game exists or was supposed to exist. Because originally Majora's Mask and all the masks that were in there were add-ons that were supposed to be in Ocarina of Time through the disk drive. You know, a lot of that shit is lost in time. And that was a completely different game where it tried to take the concept from Link to the Past where there is a dark world. In Ocarina of Time, there is a time traveling segment where you go to a world that is completely covered in evil. That's pretty much what happens. Instead of it being you travel to the dark world, it's you're traveling back several years. Or traveling forward several years, sorry, where the world has gone to shit because you were trapped in time. Because they had to somehow add that to the story when they broke up the two games. And then you go look at how really dark Majora's Mask was. I mean, there. I, I don't want to specify in spoil anything of Majora's Mask if anyone hasn't played it, but there is a lot, a lot of dreadful shit in Majora's Mask. Really depressing shit. That would hit an adult pretty hard, too, I would like to think. And aiming that for children, too, especially, is pretty rough. But I equally, I equally did not like the fact that they changed some of the bosses in the Majora's Mask remake. Specifically, Georg. Georg in regular N64, doing a no-hit of that is a fucking nightmare. Doing a no-hit of Georg is an absolute godforsaken nightmare. Godspeed on how many attempts you have to practice that shit. This is why. The hitbox on Georg is so fucking wonk that half the time you don't hit him. Half the time he fucking grabs you and sucks you and kills you. Almost instantaneously. If you're doing a three-heart run, you are just dead every time. You are dead on arrival. There is no surviving that man on impact. Unless you're dropping down, your iframes are perfect, your inputs are perfect, and you're trying to get in like this quick drop down, barrier, drop up, drop down, barrier, and go back up and do it repeatedly, and repeatedly hit him and stun lock him, basically. You'd have to be frame perfect on every input to not fuck that up. It's bad. But then in the 3D remake, they make it so easy, and they put landmines everywhere, and they make the fight... I mean, it's different, I get it, it's supposed to be a remake, but to change the mechanics of the fight pissed me off. You could update the fight where the hitbox is cleaned up. I would have liked that. I would have liked to be able to fight Georg with a fixed hitbox that doesn't suck. But then to add the landmines to make the fight easier? Really? Is that what we've come to? We we're going to make the older games that were hard as shit to toughen up the gamers into the fucking baby games? I got tough as shit from playing Majora's Mask. I got tough as shit from playing Ocarina. Tried to do Ocarina time without a sword and not getting hit. At some point, you will take damage and fuck up and have to restart from the very beginning. And that's not an easy game. But then games like, you know, again, Tears of a Kingdom. I mean, come on. It's a kid's game. If you guys are playing Tears of the Kingdom enjoying it, go play Fortnite. Go go buy a Fortnite sub. Go get a Zelda skin. Go play Fortnite. And then pass your Switch to your, your kid. Because realistically, that's what you're at. I mean, this console could play Skyrim. If Skyrim can run on a Switch, why can't we have a better Zelda game that is graphically superior to Skyrim with a Skyrim environment? Why is Breath of the Wild a Skyrim environment? Not really graphically poor. That doesn't make any sense. What I would like to see, and this is my pitch to Nintendo, Zelda Yora in Twilight Princess graphics 
Worlds Expanded Upon, the size of Breath of the Wild, and bigger than Skyrim itself, and more graphically superior in 4K. Not using any of that bullshit cell shading pastel look, because I'm tired of seeing... I'm tired. It's 2023, and we've graphically, over the years, gone and turned the shit dial and just cranked it the fuck up. I don't know why, but graphically, these games just suck. I don't know what it is. It works with some games. It Some of these graphical games that use that pastel style that already have characters that were drawn in the pastel sense. So, for example... If I were to play Mario Kart 8 right now, hey, look, Mario looks in pastel form. The game environment is pastel. That works. You want to know why? Because Mario was mostly marketed for children. It grew on us over the years to see something like this, right? It just, it worked. Let me turn this off because it's a little loud. Now, over the years, like I said, that pastel style grew on us as young people. Now we're uh, some of us are in our you know twenties and forties. We're looking at this and we're going, we're scratching our head and we're looking around at these games and they're all using that style. There is no, there's nothing different. Every single game, for whatever reason, needs to use that pastel, creamy looking style. And I absolutely despise this one track pony mind that these game developers and companies are using just the one style. It is horrendously bad yes you could get a bigger game environment but a bigger game environment does not always mean a better game it, it it's brainless look at for example smash ultimate it uses that pastel style in a little bit of the terms some of it's more graphically detailed than others certain characters look better some of them still look creamy because they were originally developed to look creamy like mario for example he, you know peach some of the non-human ones that, um, or some of the human ones that were designed to look creamy, they look creamy, but then you look at some of the other characters that aren't like Little Mac and shit, that are like, I don't know, fucking Roy or Marth, and you look at how detailed their faces are and everything else, or Sephiroth, it's a completely different game environment based around that character, because otherwise it would be off-putting as hell to look at, I don't know, Mario in big fucking Skyrim open world. It doesn't always work. You have to make the environment with the character, not the character with the environment. And that's what most video game developers are struggling to understand how to make appropriate game that is modernized. I would not feel comfortable handing Breath of the Wild or Tears of Fallen Kingdom to my kid if I had a kid. I would not feel comfortable with giving them this game. I would give them Ocarina of Time and tell them, here, this is what I grew up with. Be a man. Because graphically, it looks better. It would look better to a young man's, you know, a young man's eyes. It wouldn't, or a young woman's eyes. This is just kid shit. It's cutesy kid crap that I don't want to look at anymore. It's just awful. It's just bad. And I don't know if that's just me. Maybe it is just me. Maybe I've just grown up and expected better graphics. But if we have better technology, why can't we have better graphics to go with it? It almost makes no sense. I feel like the game developers are just fucking around at this point and not giving their best attempt at... Doing more textures, more graphics, more fog, more lighting, more shadow, uh, more ripples and mirror, uh, mirrored imaging, um, water reflections, and, and just going all out. I've seen indie developers do more work than Nintendo could, and that's bad. That's really bad. Let me make note of something. When I said Zelda 2 earlier, I said it wouldn't work in a pastel style. A lot of the side scroller games that did well were graphically well shaded and well done. Go look at Dust Elijah and Tale, and I'm not a furry for saying that. I actually like the game by Dean Dodrell. Go look up that game. That game is a side troll. Look, look at the footage. Of, I'll, I'll put it up on screen. Look at the footage of this game. Look at it. it. It's amazing. You can't tell me that Nintendo can't do that in Zelda 2 and do a remake using an art style like that. I mean, it's baffling, right? We're in 2023, going into 2024, and we're still seeing this shit pastel style that doesn't work. I don't know. Why is it that everyone's expectation for a video game has just dropped? And is it just me for calling that out and saying that that kind of style is shit? I know I've been saying a lot, the pastel style is shit, but it is shit. It, 
I, I mean, I don't know. I'm baffled. It's like spirit tracks. It's like, why, why does this exist? Why, why do we have this? You can't tell me that every Zelda game has been perfect, too. Because a lot of them have been bad as of late. Link's archery game. Why? Why Why did we need another duck hunt? Nintendo? Why did we need another duck hunt? Miyamoto, why did we need another duck hunt? Why? 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 My last and final gripe about the Zelda series as of late is the story direction. I feel like every Zelda game is playing off the ploy that, okay, Zelda's a girl, Link's a boy, uh, you gotta save the girl, uh, Ganon's the bad guy, and maybe there'll be a different bad guy the next game. You know, Vadi or whatever you want to fucking call him, the next bad guy they throw in and introduce and try to make a big time villain and make him a big shot, basically. At this point, I don't even care about the concept. I feel like a lot of the story's direction in these fucking games have just gone to okay to completely tragic and unfortunate. And a lot of the newer games need a better story direction than just, oh, um, go to the Sheikin Temple and, and collect a tear. Um, you know, go here and, you know, just explore this place. And we gotta stop Ganon this time. We gotta go get him. Come on, Link. And that's just fucking terrible. What happened to the lore, the buildup? I mean, look at fucking Zelda 1, where when you open up the game, it's just the title screen, and when it rolls the text, it just tells you what the story's all about. I'm not saying that that's what every game needs to do, but there needs to be a build-up into it. Wind Waker. When w you start up a save file on Wind Waker, they do the same thing. They start you up with this unskippable cutscene that literally explains the lore of the story so far for that game world. When you start up some of these games, they just drop you right in and like, oh, you just exit a cave, you climb up a fucking wall, and that's your introduction to climbing. And oh, here's the whole world. Bye. We're out of here. We'll tell you what. You can just do whatever you want. Figure it out. Another thing I didn't like was specifically in Breath of the Wild was cooking your own food and eating it for health. There's no traditional hearts on the ground. Well, I'm pretty sure there might be. I mean, I didn't really pay attention when I was fucking doing a no-hit run. But again, the game was not exactly, like I said, fun. It did not create anything new or create anything different. Um, my biggest gripe was in Skyward Sword and a little bit in Twilight Princess as well. They got rid of the magic meter. I feel like the magic meter gave some of the variety to the Zelda games in general because for the most part, all of these games, Link has had the Triforce of Courage, which he should be entitled to use magic, right? I mean, he does have the power of a goddess in his hand, so why can't he use fucking magic? So, it kind of just baffles me, like, did Link just lose the Triforce of Courage at some point? Did I just miss the, the memo where he just can't do magic anymore? Like, now, mind you, in the manual for Twilight Princess, there was originally a cut photo in the manual that exists today showing a lantern where it had a magic meter instead of just a regular lantern going out with a little bar that just depletes. It was a magic meter shown on the side, and it used to use the magic meter just like in Link to the Past, where it sh if you played Link to the Past, to use the lantern, you needed to use magic to use it, which was kind of weird, but it made sense from one perspective or another. But again, it was an aspect and a gameplay mechanic. A gameplay mechanic that was removed. Now, there might be something different. I mean, obviously, you could just say, oh, well, what about the stamina bar? That's That's new. It's like, do you really consider a stamina bar, which is supposed to be an obvious human restriction on a humanoid character, really a bar or really a meter? Can't we just turn that off? Do we really need to see the meter? Do I really need to know when Link's tired when I can't just hear him huffing and puffing? Half the time, I don't even look at that mirror, that, that meter at all. I'm just looking at the actual gameplay. I'm looking at the environment. And I'm just going, do I really want to go over there? Do I want to go to that next place? Do, do I feel like doing this? What's what, what's the story so far? What, what's the coolest thing I've killed so far? What's the coolest creature i killed so far? And meanwhile, on Tears of the Kingdom, people are just fucking killing uh, creatures with giant dicks. It's in, in doing the, the reanimate thing or whatever, the rego. And I'm just sitting there. I'm just going... I'm scratching my head. I'm thinking, how, how the fuck is this the Zelda game I grew up with? 
How are you going to call this new? How is this a new Zelda game? How is this not? Explain to me. How is this not Fortnite with a Zelda skin? How is it not? I'm not going to call that a Zelda game. I'm not going to call Breath of the Wild a Zelda game. And I certainly am not going to call Skyward Sword a Zelda game either. The last good Zelda game, to my knowledge, after Ocarina was Twilight Princess. And it pretty much ended it right there. And so far, I think I've just decided that I'm never going to play another Zelda game again until a better one that actually isn't shit, that isn't trying to reinvent itself um, in the wrong direction, uh, not a remake that's entirely trash, or they're redoing the boss aspect to be easier for the new generation of kiddos. I want to see a genuine new game with a new story, new lore, new everything done appropriately. And again, you could sit there and say, well, Nintendo can't do that. Oh, it'd be too expensive. Look at the fucking modding community for Sonic. Look at the fucking Sonic modding community. They've made whole games that look better than most of the fucking generic games that you see now that are Sonic brand. And I could sit here and talk 24-7 about how bad the latest Sonic games have been. They've all gone down this system where here's the overworld and the main character just fucking flies right through it. And here's the game dev just mocking the whole scene and just saying, here, we just made all this art around Sonic and he runs in a straight line. Meanwhile, there's no mechanics at any point or any objective just other than going from point A to point B. There are games that Sega has previously made, like Shadow the Hedgehog, which, again, was not a very favorited game, but it had story. It had story directions that you could go, so the player had an objective. Hey, you want to be completely evil and an asshole or be a completely good guy? It had an aspect. Whereas most Sonic games just do not. Colors sucked. Sonic Colors absolutely sucked. That was a joke for people to make OCs. I feel like every game designer and every company out there, Sega included, they're not living in any manner because Sonic 06 sucked. Let me be clear here. I own that copy of that game, physical disc copy. I hold it and play it once a year on my birthday. My birthday's coming up soon. I'm going to play that completely drunk, and I'm just going to mock the hell out of the game. Now, I'm just going to say this out loud. They made this shit nearly 15 years ago and more. And it's still dog shit. But you know what? As much as it was dog shit, graphically, it holds up. Graphically and song-wise a little bit too. The song, the music in that game is actually pretty bopping. The graphics were pretty bopping. It's just the gameplay they didn't fucking know how to do for some reason. The people that have actually sat down and cre recreated Sonic 06 online in the modding community, if you look at that version of that game that they put together, it's actually fucking amazing. They recreated and fixed that game from scratch. And they did a damn good job. But now you look at these, the same thing with the Zelda and the Mar even the Mario games as of late. I feel like Mario has less direct... I feel like when they did Luigi's Mansion 3, I feel like that was the closest and best thing that Nintendo has put out in years. Why is Luigi's Mansion 3 the best thing? Why not... Give us Mario Sunshine 2. Give us, a, you know, a sequel to a previous game that actually did well. You know, or make a new uh, Sunshine. Maybe not have Flood. Maybe have something else. And then announce that you're doing Sunshine 2. You know, like, we need better games from these publishers that aren't these generic graphic fucking games. And then just being packaged as a brand new game. Because I don't want to pay 60 or $70 for um, Tears of a Kingdom if it's going to be shit and have a bunch of people slapping dicks at the main enemies and bosses and killing them. If I'm going to play that game like that at this point, I might as well just not even buy it at all. Because that just seems like the advertising ploy. And that doesn't seem entertaining to the game industry whatsoever. That's not a good outlet and look. If, if I was Miyamoto and my brand's character, which is Link, was in the Zelda franchise is being shitted on by having the players and the customers grabbing essentially player created dicks out of objects and slapping them in the bosses and killing them and people paid for my game I would be ashamed of myself as a developer I would actually be ashamed of myself 
I would probably go to that tweet, go in the comment section as the dev, and put, I'm really upset that you guys created this as a developer, and I'm ashamed that I allowed it this. Because, I mean, that that's a slap in the face to how many years of Zelda lore? I mean, honestly, I don't care if I get shitted on for saying that uh, Tears of the Kingdom suck. I don't care if I get shitted on for saying Breath of the Wild sucks. I feel like graphically, they in, in environment-wise, for its time, it is a very shit game. Are the mechanics to the game bad? No. Not at all. Is the environment and graphics, and maybe even the sound detail bad? Yeah. Do I feel like that they should be putting in fucking DLC for you to be able to download a skin? No. That's not what Zelda was about. Maybe that's just them trying to make extra money, fine, to make ends meet. To, because, you know, the fact that people don't want to play, uh, pay for an online service, that's fine. But, um, again, really shit idea. I, I, I don't want to play Tears of the Kingdom, and I don't want to play Breath of the Wild any longer. In fact, again, I may never play a Zelda game ever again being dead ass here. I'm pretty much done with Zelda games from here on.